In 2016, Dennis Filet's daughter Rachel directed a documentary about her father, titled Dennis Filet, A United Man. To watch this film and to find out more about this video's subject, there will be a link in the description to find the documentary on Amazon Prime. Manchester United have had many great strikers, including the likes of Andy Cole, Eric Cantona and Ruud van Nistelrooy, but there is one man who has scored more goals for Manchester United than all of these players and does not get the recognition he deserves. Dennis Violet is Manchester United's fifth all-time top scorer, with a tally of 179 goals in 293 games from 1952 to 1962. Despite playing for Manchester United on both sides of the Munich Air disaster and notching an incredible tally for the club, his name is often forgotten about when it comes to Manchester United legends. This is the story of Dennis Violet, Manchester United's forgotten striker. Dennis Violet was born in Manchester on the 20th of September 1933. He joined the Manchester United Academy in 1949 and made his debut for the club against Newcastle in April 1953. At this time, Manchester United were building a great team under Scottish manager Sir Matt Busby. Several young players had been spotted by Chief Scout Joe Armstrong and assistant manager Jimmy Murphy, who helped integrate them into the side. This side was built around youngsters such as Violet, as well as the likes of Duncan Edwards, Bobby Charlton, Eddie Coleman, David Pegg and Tommy Taylor. Despite his scrawny build that led to doubts about him being able to compete physically, Violet succeeded and formed a good partnership with fellow striker Tommy Taylor. Violet would cement his place in the team in the 1953-1954 campaign, scoring 11 goals in 29 games. His goal tally would improve over the next two seasons, scoring 20 in both campaigns, and in the latter, he got his first major honour. Manchester United won the 1955-1956 First Division, beating Blackpool to the title by 11 points. With Taylor and Violet scoring 45 goals between them, the partnership was truly shining bright. Violet had formed part of a side that had won the league with an average age of just 21. For the 1956-1957 season, Manchester United became the first English team to play in the newly formed European Cup. The Football League were against English teams competing in the tournament and had previously prevented Chelsea from partaking. Manchester United were able to partake, however, and soon proved why they wanted to be invited. Dennis Violet scored four goals as they defeated Belgian side Anderlecht in the opening round by ten goals to nil. To this date, it remains the biggest win in Manchester United's history. The Red Devils reached the semi-final of the European Cup, but were knocked out by a Real Madrid side containing the likes of Ferran Puskas and Alfredo Di Stefano. They were also denied a double, losing the FA Cup final to Aston Villa. However, they retained their league title, and Violet finished the season with 26 goals across all competitions. With 66 goals in three seasons, his career was shaping up well, and the Busby Babes looked to be on course for long-term success. However, this was brought to an abrupt end. Manchester United faced Red Star Belgrade to reach the semi-finals of the European Cup for the second year in a row. On their flight home, they stopped over in Munich to refuel. Despite snowy conditions, the pilot of the plane decided to continue with the flight, rather than demand the passengers stay overnight until conditions improved. The plane attempted to take off for the third time that night, but collided with some slush that had formed on the runway and crashed through a fence. Eight Manchester United players died as a result of the crash. These were Jeff Bent, Roger Byrne, Eddie Coleman, Duncan Edwards, Mark Jones, David Pegg, Tommy Taylor and Billy Whelan. Walter Crickmer, Tom Curry and Ben Worley, Manchester United staff members, also lost their lives. It is reported that before the crash, Billy Whelan, who was not a confident flyer, stated, This may be death, but I'm ready. Dennis Violet was a survivor of the crash, escaping with head and facial injuries. Goalkeeper Harry Gregg had helped pull survivors out of the plane in fears that it would explode. John Doherty, a friend of Violet, who left the club shortly before the disaster, stated, The effect of Munich on his life was that he mustn't waste a minute of what's left. Violet was ruled out for some time, but he managed to come back before the end of the season. Considering that surviving players Johnny Barry and Jackie Blanchflower never played again, it was an incredible turnaround. Manchester United had made an amazing recovery and reached the FA Cup final, where they would play Bolton Wanderers. Violet played in the game, but there was no fairy tale. Bolton won 2-0, with a double from Nat Lofthouse. Violet recovered brilliantly, and was even better than before. 
Over the next two seasons, he scored a total of 53 goals in 73 games, including 32 goals in 36 league games in the 1959-1960 season, which is a club record that still stands today. As a reward for his achievements, Violet was finally called up to the England national team, making his debut in a 2-0 defeat to Hungary. He went on to play against Luxembourg the next year, scoring his sole international goal in a 4-1 win. Sadly, with the likes of Jimmy Greaves, Roger Hunt and Bobby Charlton also vying for an England spot, Violet would not play for England again. After the Munich disaster, he often frequented pubs and clubs with friends, staying out until the early hours of the morning. Whilst his form kept up, his behaviour behind the scenes irked his superiors. Violet's goals were not enough to win Manchester United any honours, Stan Cullis's Wolves pipped them to the league title, and Matt Busby soon realised change was needed. Manchester United brought in forwards such as David Hurd and Dennis Law. Despite his goal-scoring heroics, there wasn't any room to accommodate Violet in this team, and he had to make way. In 1962, aged only 28, he was sold to second division side Stoke for £25,000. Whilst it was a big step down, he had the fortune of being a teammate of legendary winger Stanley Matthews. Manchester United went on to finally reclaim the FA Cup next season, defeating Leicester in the final. Over the next few years, they would also win two more first division titles and their first European Cup in 1968. Violet did have his own success, however. In his second season at the Potters, he scored 23 goals, which helped the side win the second division title and gain promotion back to the first division. Violet was a key part of Stoke gaining promotion, scoring four goals against Charlton Athletic to end a barren run, and Stoke would go unbeaten for the next 18 games. For Stoke's first season back in the first division, Violet's position changed, with manager Tony Waddington moving him to midfield. Stoke celebrated ending their 10-year absence by reaching a 1964 League Cup final, where they would face off against Leicester. The first leg at Stoke was drawn 1-1. Stoke went to Filbert Street optimistic. Violet scored for Stoke, but Leicester would win the game 3-2, winning 4-3 on aggregate. Violet had lost yet another final. He announced his retirement in the summer of 1967. However, he soon reversed his decision and joined America's side Baltimore Bays, playing two seasons in the newly formed North America Soccer League. He leapt back across the pond afterwards, joining non-league side Witten Albion. After a brief spell there, he joined Irish side Linfield as player coach. His time at the club was brief, but he finally broke his biggest curse. Linfield won the Irish Cup in 1970, and at the end of his playing career, having lost in three cup finals before, Violet was finally on the winning side on the big day. It was the last action of his playing career. Violet spent a brief spell at coach at Preston North End. He then went on to manage Crew Alexandra, but lost his job after his side were knocked out of the FA Cup by non-league opposition. In 1974, Violet again made the leap across the pond to America, taking the job at Washington Diplomats, at a time where there was an influx of big names coming to America, such as George Best, Pele, and Franz Beckenbauer. Violet used his expert knowledge to encourage many to play the game, setting up soccer schools for children. He soon settled in Jacksonville, Florida, where he would spend the rest of his life. He had spells at various different Jacksonville-based teams over the next 25 years. In 1997, the survivors of the Munich air disaster were invited by UEFA to attend the Champions League final in Munich, between Borussia Dortmund and Juventus. Reunited with former teammates, he was also able to meet Sir Alex Ferguson for the first time. Unfortunately, shortly afterwards, Violet fell ill, and it was soon discovered that he had a brain tumour. Violet went through two years of surgery and treatment to combat the tumour, but it was sadly not enough. On the 6th of March 1999, Dennis Violet died at the age of 65 in his adopted home of Jacksonville. He was unable to live to see his former side Manchester United win the treble two months later. Violet often gets ignored in favour of his contemporaries such as Bobby Charlton and Duncan Edwards in the Manchester United history books, but his record of 32 league goals in a season is a record that not even Cristiano Ronaldo, Wayne Rooney or Ruud van Nistelrooy were able to beat. Shortly after his death, a street near Stoke City's Britannia Stadium was renamed Dennis Violet Avenue. The city of Florida also paid tribute, naming a training centre after him in 2006 and every year, North Florida University and Jacksonville University compete for the Violet Cup. His ashes were scattered in front of the Stretford End at Old Trafford. There are indeed tributes to the man out there, and whilst he certainly had success, one wonders what might have been. 
Violet was, of course, very lucky to escape from the Munich air disaster with his life and the ability to play football, but he lost his strike partner in Tommy Taylor and was moved on just before Manchester United's renaissance in the 1960s. Perhaps if he had been allowed to fight for his role at United, or been given more opportunities for the three lines, he might be spoken of in the same light of players such as Bobby Charlton and Jimmy Greaves. Dennis Violet tends to be a name that blends into Manchester United's history, popping up now and again when discussing the Busby Babes era, never really being the spotlight of the story. But with 178 goals and 293 games for Manchester United, he was without a doubt so much more than a side character, and is one of Manchester United's greatest ever forwards. <laughs>